Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 119, Teens and Acceptance. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my exceptional and motivated co-host, Madison Whalen. Uh, hi, everyone. Yeah, you're over there this yeah, time. Sorry, didn't <sighs> That's notice. okay. How you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing all right. How about you? Doing good. So you had a couple of marathon marching band days this week, didn't you? Yep. How'd, how'd that go? Overall, not horrible, which is good. We're starting to get into... We'll always take not horrible over horrible. Yeah, we're starting to get the drill set up, so that's going to be something we're exploring in band camp. And that's next week, right? Mm -hmm. So that's five days of nine to nine? Yep. It's going to be a busy week. In fact, so busy, we're not going to be able to do our podcast at our regularly scheduled time on Thursday. Yeah. So we'll probably wind up doing your podcast on Saturday. Yeah, at some or point. Or Sunday. <clears throat> at some point. I don't know. We've got stuff going on on Saturday, so that might conflict. Yeah. But that's not what we're talking about today. Yeah, not. Today, we're talking about teens and acceptance. So we'll explore what acceptance is and why it's important. Then we'll talk a little bit about understanding teen development and how that plays into acceptance. And finally, we'll explore tips on improving teen acceptance. But before we start that, I would invite our audience, both our listening and our viewing audience, to subscribe to our podcast if you don't already do so. You can get audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. Video versions of all the network's podcasts can be found listed as Insights into Things. We're basically in any place you can find a podcast these days, Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Amazon, etc. I would also invite our audience to write in, give us some feedback, tell us how we're doing, give us some show suggestions. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We are on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. On Instagram, we're at instagram.com slash insights into things, or you can get links to all those on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. You ready to get started? Sure. So we're going to mix things up a little bit this week, and you're going to do, you're going to intro segment one. Here we go. So in this first segment, we're going to be talking about what acceptance is and why it's important. So the research for uh, this, um, for most, for the entire show, um, comes from understandingteenagers.com. Um, and they say, it, and for what acceptance is, they say acceptance means acknowledging your teenager is the way, is the way, is the way he, is the way he or she is today and choosing to deal with it as a fact of life. They are as they are today. They might change in the future, but here and now, this is who they are. They are your child, and you choose to love them the way they are. This is different to consistently saying, I wish she would, or when she is going to, or I'm so sick of. Acceptance is being able to see your teen for who they are, shortcomings and all, and say I love you as you are. Acceptance doesn't mean that you have to approve, agree, condone, support, or even tolerate certain behaviors or attitudes that your teen displays. 
Acceptance doesn't mean that you forget the things they have said or done that have hurt you or others. You avoid taking appropriate actions to protect yourself and others from unsafe behavior. Lowering your expectations or hopes of your teen. Never getting annoyed, frustrated, or angry at your teen's behavior. Acceptance is acknowledging what is happening, how your teen is behaving, all the feelings that generate that generate for you, and then choosing to say, this is who we are today, and I can live with that today. Acceptance, is, acceptance isn't easy, and it can take some effort to get there, but it is important. So why is acceptance important? So parents need to be an agent of change for their teens. Your teenager will open up to you as an agent of change when they feel accepted by you. If they're not accepted, we can't do our jobs. Mm -hmm. So accepting your teen is an important but difficult challenge for many parents. It's easy for our teenager shortcomings to dominate how we perceive them. The more conscious we become of their feelings, the more negatives we see. It can become a downward spiral of frustration and disappointment. This negative cycle results in many of us trying harder to correct our teens' attitudes and behavior. We become more critical, more demanding, and feel increasingly stressed and angry. The negative emotions come out in how we then relate to our teacher, a teenager. Teenagers perceive the negativity and interpret its meaning, you're not good enough, when you change, I'll accept you, and things of that nature. The more we relate to our teenager out of frustration and anger, the less receptive they become to our influence. The harder we try to make a teenager change, the more stubborn and rebellious they become. This is why acceptance is so important to foundation and foundational to how parents impact teenage behavior. Now, these definitions that we're talking about here and the importance of it center around teens being accepted by their parents. And I kind of, I think we needed to focus on that at the beginning of this discussion because if a teen isn't getting the acceptance at home, they can't possibly get the acceptance outside the home with friends or peers or coworkers or other students. So it's vitally important that parents accept their teens. So many parents have this tendency of <clears throat> having this image of what their teen should be. You know, I want my teen to act like me or be like me or do the things that I did. And you wind up putting unrealistic expectations on your teens. And when they fail to meet those expectations, these negative feelings arise. Yeah. So you have to have that acceptance from a parent to teenager level before your teenager can go out into the world and get that acceptance elsewhere. The acceptance elsewhere isn't less important, but it starts at home. Mm -hmm. Do you? What are your thoughts on that? How do you feel about that? I definitely feel like you are right because at home is, well, teens are technically supposed to be really close with the people they live with. And if they can't really find acceptance in where they live, trying to find it elsewhere is gonna be a lot more difficult. Yeah. Now, how do you feel about acceptance from a peer level? Do you, well, first of all, do you feel that you get acceptance at home here from, from mommy and daddy? Yeah, I definitely <clears throat> feel like you two accept me for who I want to be and what I want to be in a sense. So I definitely feel like I, I feel accepted by you guys. So I think that's kind of covered. Yeah. And I kind of feel, and, and I'm pretty sure mommy is on the, along the same lines that we don't want you to be the same as us. We want you to be your own person. <clears throat> so when, you know, you have this tendency and, and parents in general have this tendency of saying, oh, well, she gets this from you or she gets this from me or she's got my nose or, you know, whatever it is, or she acted this, acts this way because of you. Parents try to find those similarities because they want to know, they want that reassurance that, yes, this is my offspring and they're taking after me and continuing my line or, or whatever it is. But I like seeing the things that are different from you. Like, you're a musician. I, I couldn't do music. You know, I was in choir, but I have 
I have less. You have more musical talent in your pinky finger than I have in my entire body. And I think that's awesome. Artistically, you know, artistically, I can't draw stick figures to look convincing. So the fact that you're this aspiring artist and I, the way that I see you progress and improve. And I know that that doesn't come from me. It's you and you alone. The fact that you're left-handed and neither mommy or daddy are left-handed. I think that's really cool. Yeah. The fact that I feel like I'm the only person in our entire family line that's left-handed. Right. And I think that's really cool that that's, that's your, your claim to fame of saying, yes, I'm unique. I'm different. And mommy and daddy love that about you. And we accept that about you. So I like to see those differences and celebrate those differences. Cause I think it's really neat that you're becoming your own person. Yeah. Uh, just like with Sam, you know, Sam's interest in broadcast and the engineering and all the stuff that he's into there. Yes. There are a lot of things that Sam and I share some, some passions that he and I share. There are passions you and I share. And those are things that we immediately connect on. But the things that you alone have kind of developed into your movie making. I think that's awesome. That's something that drives me to be better in that area or to learn more about it. And it's something that helps me to grow. And then we can connect on that as well. So I think those things, accepting those differences really is what what builds that relationship between teenagers and their parents. Yeah. Um, so when there are those differences, I think it's a good thing, not a bad thing. Yeah. So you get the acceptance here. How do you feel? And it's, it's, it's hard to ask this question now because of COVID and all the crazy stuff going on. But do you feel like let's talk marching band. So now you're in this community of, of people that are talented musicians that have this passion for marching band. Do you feel that you're being accepted into that group as well? Yeah, pretty much. Um, I get along with most of the other trumpet players, and I also get along with some of the other instruments, and most of the teachers are pretty good with me. So I definitely think I'm pretty accepted in the marching band area. And I think it's important that you feel accepted because that acceptance that you get at home translates into a level of self-confidence that you have that they didn't even talk about in, in our introduction here. But that acceptance that you get at home helps to build that self-confidence that you need to move on and be accepted elsewhere. If you feel out of place at home, you're immediately going to feel awkward and outcast and stuff in other environments. Do you agree? Yeah, probably. So all in all, do you think that you have a well-adjusted attitude towards acceptance at this point in time? Yeah, I definitely think that thanks to you guys, I've definitely started feeling accepted and I have that amount of self-confidence that if I am in a new area where um, I could gain acceptance, I probably will. So with marching band, did you immediately get acceptance because of the community or did you get acceptance because of your engagement within that community? Like, did you have to engage with others before they accepted you or was it just an accepting community in general? I mean, it was, a, it's a, it was actually a really accepting community in general because they were kind of looking. My, um, my band teacher, who was also the marching band um, teacher, kind of like wanted all of the trumpets from my one class to join because they want, they kind of just wanted new members and I was kind of immediately accepted in afterwards. Well, that's good. So there wasn't much effort on your part then. Not too much. Well, that's great. So let's take a little break and we'll come back and we'll talk about understanding teen development and how acceptance plays into that. For seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. 
The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about teens and acceptance. So it's important to kind of understand teen development to really put acceptance into perspective. So acceptance and change. Acceptance as the foundation for transformation is true for all of us. doesn't matter your age. And it's vital to transform teenage behavior. If you have had someone in your life who was always critical or you of you putting you down and constantly disapproved of you, you'd be open. Would you be open to allowing that person to speak meaningfully into your life? It's likely you'd become defensive whenever they said something and dismissive of any suggestions they made rather than allowing them to influence your life. You'd likely become increasingly critical and judgmental of them. The reality is the people who you listen to and respect are those who you feel accepted and valued by. The same is true for your teenager. If as a parent you have become a constant source of criticism, judgment, nagging, and disapproval, then your teenager is going to be very reluctant to comply with anything you say. If your teenager feels like she she or he has to change to earn your acceptance, then they will be far more resistant and closed off to your input in their, in their life. When they feel like you are against them and not for them, then they will shut you out as much as possible. The result being your relationship with your teenager deteriorates and their attitude and behavior is likely to get worse and not better. When your teenager feels accepted by you, not only will they be more pleasant to get along with, but they will be more open to you and your influence. If your teenager feels you value them and care for them, then they will see you as someone who is worth listening to and following. And I think that's a pretty true for everybody, isn't it? I mean, yeah. And they actually do a good like idea of kind of putting in the parents shoes of kind of giving them kind of the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. When I was growing up, I had kind of a very dynamic relationship with my parents. My father was very disengaged, um, for various reasons. Um, he had substance abuse issues. He was an alcoholic. He worked night shift. I rarely saw him. And when I did see him, he usually was drinking and didn't want to be bothered. But he was always very critical of us. I had three brothers as well as myself, and he was always critical of all of us. He always never really had something nice to say. You know, it was one of those things where it wasn't even constructive criticism. It was always the way he would criticize you. It was he was disappointed in you because you didn't live up to his standards. And it bothered my two older brothers a lot because they looked up to my dad. They had a very different relationship with him because they were about 10 years older than me. They had a very different relationship with him when they were kids because he was more engaged as a father. And as my third brother, who was about four years older than me, came along and I came along, he was done being a dad at that point in time. He kind of – he was ready to hang up the towel and, and, and be done with it. He didn't really want to have uh, four kids – moving forward at that point. So he was very disengaged with us. So the negative side of things is what we got from him. And the advantage, I guess, that we had was we didn't engage with him very often. So I never got an overwhelming amount of negativity from him. But then there was my mom on the other side who was overwhelmingly positive. And it was, she was like that. Because she was naturally like that, but she was kind of over the top because I think she saw how our, our dad treated us and she tried to make up for that. Mm. So 
in the end, it was kind of a balance back and forth. But in in reading over the research here, it was really an example of both of those, where you get the negative, you get the positive. And the one lesson that I learned from that, and I think you and I have talked about this on the podcast before, it's criticizing is not a bad thing if it's done from a constructive standpoint. Mm -hmm. So when there's room to improve, I firmly believe that parents should be there to guide their kids to improve. I don't think the parents should be there to change the child. I can lay out a path. I can show you where you can improve, but it's up to you to improve. Whether you choose to go that path or not is entirely up to you. But the important thing is, regardless of what path you choose, we still accept you. How does that mentality work with you? How do you think that it, that that you respond to that? Overall, I definitely do believe that criticism is good as long as it is constructive and and basically brought about well. Um, too much critic now. As long as you leave it open and don't like force your opinion, um, I definitely think it's good. I definitely don't think that you should constantly praise your kids, especially if it's at the expense of helping them learn something or improve on something. Because if you keep saying that um, something they do is good, they're never going to get better at it. How do you think mommy and daddy deal with that? You're pretty good with that. Um, every time I bring you a piece of art, um, well, you definitely compliment me. Um, you definitely say things I could probably improve on that more than likely I probably implement and later on improve on. Yeah, and a good example of that is probably your movie, right? So you went back, you'd made some changes in the movie, you came back to me, we talked about it, and we started talking about some of your character development. And I gave you my thoughts, and you heard me out, and we worked through some of them, but some of them you didn't agree with, and you decided to go in a different creative direction. And that's perfectly fine. That's your story. You run with it the way that you want. I can give you my guidance and what I think, but ultimately, you're the author, it's your story, and I'm sure I'll love it no matter what, and I'm excited to see how it turns out. So that's a great example of, of that cooperative attitude that we have with each other. So teenage behavior and development. There are reasons why 13-year-olds aren't considered adults or expected to fulfill all the responsibilities of adults. They aren't emotionally, physically, or mentally ready to be adults. When considering what drives you nuts about your teenager, it's important to consider that their character, it's not, it's the, let's try that one again. <laughs> when considering what drives you nuts about your teenager, it's important to consider, is it their character that's bugging you, or is it a function of their development that's annoying you? Don't confuse character with development. When your younger teenager constantly forgets things or seems permanently disorganized, it isn't because she's incompetent and, gr and going to grow up to be useless. Young teenagers are vague and forgetful because their developing brains are under construction and a side effect is a forgetfulness and disorganization. She'll grow out of it, but not tomorrow. When you normally, when you normally sensible 16-year-old son starts doing some stupid and dangerous things with his friends, it doesn't mean he's turning into a delinquent or is destined to be reckless. Adolescent males in their mid-teens are wired to take risks and very susceptible to the influence of their friends, especially in the heat of the moment. He will grow out of it. When teens do annoying, frustrating things, it is good to stop and ask yourself, is it just my teen, or do most teens this age do similar things? If it's development, then a constructive person, then a restruct- Ugh. You and me both, kid. <laughs> <laughs> if it is developmental, then a constructive response is to work with them to develop some strategies for helping them to get through the phase. Help your early teen daughter work out systems to be better organized. 
Talk to your son about avoiding situations where he is likely to make dumb choices. Accepting where they are Accepting where they are up to in their development can help take the anxiety and emotional intensity out of it for you. It also leads you towards constructive responses rather than yelling and negative labeling. So this is a very interesting point here about accepting your teens as they progress. So as the teens grow, their brains grow, their brains change, their needs change, their attitudes change. And you have to accept them all the way along when it's developmental. It's very difficult to see um, uh, systemic issues in someone when they're at that young of an age. You can't see really personality disorders unless you're really professionally trained to. Because the personalities change so much. Um, just like their bodies are changing at a rapid rate, their brains and their personality are changing at a rapid rate. And uh, as parents, that can be a very frustrating thing for us because we may do or ask something today and get one response and then ask the same thing a month later and get a completely different response. So as adults, it's difficult for us to adjust to that inconsistency despite the fact that we all went through it when we were that age too. Yeah. So because we usually deal with other adults most of the day at work, there's a certain expectation that we get into that we're guilty of that we try to impose on our teens. And when that expectation isn't met because your teens, that, that frustration creeps in and that acceptance starts to wane a bit there. So parents kind of need to be mindful of that moving forward to make sure that, you know, you're not putting those unrealistic expectations on your teens. Um, how do you feel? Do you think that you run into any of these things where you are handling things differently today than you were, say, two or three years ago when you first got into your teen years because of that development? Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely when I had first gone through... Uh, everything. I was a lot, I, I was a very different person. I was the kind of person who thought every single day was a bad day, and like I could hardly find any silver linings in them. And now, I'm chill with pretty much every day. There's bad stuff that happens, but I don't over-exaggerate it to the point where um, I don't like it. I've definitely mentally grown a lot more um, I don't have as bad of mood swings, at least not horrible ones. I typically don't get angry. I typically don't get, like, enraged mood swings anymore, like I really used to back then. Um, so overall, I definitely think that I've gotten a lot more calm, um, and I've gotten better with my development. Well, and you remember, there was a point in time you would get done school... And at dinner, we would always have a discussion. You know, that was one of the things we've always been very fortunate about, that we've always had that family dinner where we have a chance to unwind, talk about each other's day, kind of help each other get by any problems we had. And there was a time there for uh, quite a period of time where you had a very negative experience almost every day to talk about at school. And the one exercise that we would go through was, okay, tell me something positive that happened today. And you would struggle sometimes with it. But I think for the most part, you were always able to come up with something that was positive for the day and kind of turn that negativity, at least if not positive, then at least neutral for the whole day. And we don't have to do that anymore. You know, you've actually gotten to the point where I come home and I'm exhausted or I had a bad day or a stressful day and you're playing that calming role for me now. Yeah. Which is, which is kind of interesting. You know, the role reversal that we ran into. Yeah. Um, so I think that's kind of a neat example of that progression of personality and development. And I, mommy and daddy accept you as much today as we did three years ago when we were trying to find positive things for the day. Yeah. 
And that's really the message for parents is that your teens are going to change. You know, they may be annoying today because they're teens, but you still have to accept them because accepting them today and encouraging them today is what makes them the teens of tomorrow. And I think you're living proof that that philosophy has worked quite successfully. Yeah. So speaking of that, we're going to take our last break. We're going to come back and then we're going to talk about tips for improving teen acceptance. We'll be right back. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back, everyone. So we're talking teens and acceptance. And now we're going to talk about tips for improving teen acceptance. So the first thing we have here is don't take it all personally. We live in a culture that creates an amazing pressure on parents to get it right. You don't have to look hard any day to find an article or news report that is shaming or accusing parents of failing in some way. This culture of parent blaming can cause us all to feel like our kids failing our ki- our kids failings are a reflection on our parenting. When our teenagers mess up, we think it somehow exposes our parenting failures. When we take our teenagers' behavior as a reflection of our parenting performance, we direct a whole heap of negative emotions in their direction. Your teen's behavior is not always a reflection of who you are or your parenting. Teens are going to do dumb things, have emotional outbursts, lose their temper, say outrageous things, push limits, and make mistakes. None of these mean you are failing as a parent. No matter how diligent a parent you are, your teen is still going to be a teenager at some point. There is no such thing as a perfect parent, so don't expect you will be one. There is no such thing as a perfect teenager, so don't expect your teenager's imperfections are all... So don't think your teenager's imperfections are all about you and your parenting. Face up to your emotions. Acceptance of your teen doesn't mean that um, the emotional toll or behavior will disappear. Living with a moody, disrespectful, or uncooperative teenager is difficult. Your teen is probably going to cause you a whole world of pain. You haven't yet, though. So admit it and deal with the feelings constructively. Constructively doesn't mean venting your emotions at your teenager. Your feelings of anger, frustration, and disappointment are real and justified. However, while the feelings aren't wrong, how you express them can make things a lot worse. If your teen does not acknowledge the negative impact of what they have done, your getting angry and resenting them won't change that. In fact, in many cases, it'll result in your teenager thinking you're the one with the problem. If your teen knows he's done something to upset or hurt you, your anger will only distract him from his own culpability and remorseful feelings. Considering other outlets for your feelings towards your teen. Have a rant to your partner about how our teenager is driving you nuts. Go for a run. Write a journal or scream into a pillow. Whatever it is, find some way to dissipate the energy away from your teenager. 
Acknowledging how you feel and expressing the emotion is a safe in a safe place will enable you to respond to your team in a more constructive fashion. When you aren't seething with rage or feeling completely fed up, you're much more likely to engage in a positive conversation with your teenager. Look for the positives. A good way to interrupt the cycle of negativity and criticism is to consciously look for the things you appreciate about your teenager. Make an effort every day to identify something about who you, your teenager is or what they do that is positive. What is it about them that you appreciate? What did they do today that was helpful or step in the right direction? Once you identify it, make a point to communicate with your teenager. You don't have to make a big song or dance about it, just a simple compliment that starts with, I really admire the way you, or I appreciated it today when you. It might be worth finding a place to know these things down, so in those times when you are feeling, are, you are being, you are being driven crazy, you can pull out your list and be reminded of the positives about your teenager. Don't sweat the small stuff. And this is kind of my philosophy for life in general. A, cons- a consequence of not accepting your teen can be that you become hypercritical of everything about them. One way to make acceptance more doable is to make a list of things that drive you nuts about your teenager then cross out the stuff that really doesn't matter in the long run. For instance, a teenager's bedroom is a common sore point for many parents. But in the big scheme of things, a messy bedroom is an issue that needs to be dealt with. Is a messy. See, it, it helps you could t- if you mention the whole sentence there and take it in context. Yeah. But in the big scheme of things, is a messy bedroom an issue that needs to be dealt with right away in order for your teen to live a successful life? Sure, a messy bedroom might annoy you and not be how you want to live, but if your teen's okay with it, just let it go. Shut the door and don't think about it. It isn't impacting you or your life. That's one less issue for you to have to process and manage. Likewise, the music a teenager listens to. So what if you don't like it? As long as you don't have to hear it and it isn't keeping people awake, is there any good reason for you to get excited about it? Expressing disapproval over music or computer games just creates negative noise for very little gain. And the final tip we have here is acknowledge the state of play. For the things on your list that you can't cross off, make a habit every day of reading through them and acknowledging how things are and who your teen is today. Take the list and before reading it, say to yourself, I accept your teen's name. I accept with your teen's name. I accept them knowing that, then read off the list of issues, etc. that that he that they don't clean up after themselves, is hard to talk to, is treating their siblings badly, is constantly disrespectful, etc. This isn't condoning or saying the behavior is okay or shouldn't change. It is merely reinforcing that you need to start with who your teen is today and be conscious of changing to accept them as the, of choosing to accept them as they are. When you can shift your mindset to accepting your teen first and then seeing what happens, you will be surprised at how much easier change is. So kind of as a footnote here, I, I kind of want to, you know, give my two cents on this whole topic. This particular topic was very difficult for me because I don't think we've ever experienced any of the problems that they bring up here. So for me to relate a lot of these um, tips and tricks was kind of difficult because I've never had to use them, either with you or with Sam. Um, I've, I've never had a situation where I haven't had that connection with any of my kids. Um, so I've been very fortunate in that. It's been very easy to accept both of you for who you are. And I think that's more a testament to you and to Sam than it is to me as a parent being accepting. You guys make my job easy a lot of times. 
So <laughs> I'm going to take it with a grain of salt that the source here knows what they're talking about. Because I can't say I put any of these things to practice because I've not needed them. I mean, yeah. So it's important, you know, total disclosure here, you know, that, that this one really is one that I can't talk from experience on, which is one of the things I, that's sort of what I try to do. That's my contribution to this podcast is speaking from experience. And I, I can't in this case, <laughs> um, mommy and daddy accept you for who you are. Um, and as a parent in general, I really think it's not, it's not our job to sweat the little things. It's our job to set an example. You know, our job on this earth is to, raise you, protect you, and teach you how to be a decent contributing member of society. And as long as we do that, I think we're successful parents. And I think as long as any parent does that, that's all they can ask for. Yeah. So mommy and daddy try to do that through example, not through preaching, not through yelling at you or anything like that. I don't think any of that was really worthwhile. Yeah. Ironically, I have my dad to thank for that because my dad did the exact opposite. You know, my dad was a yeller and he was someone who didn't set a good example. My father never wanted me to be like him. And he was very clear about that. You know, my father was not successful professionally, was not successful from a family standpoint. He came from a married, a, a you know, a divorce before he met my mother. So he didn't want me to make the same mistakes that he did. And in kind of inspiring me to not do that, he served as a bad example for me, which I guess in a way was, was his best attempt at being a parent. Yeah. Um, but you know, he always told me don't, he wanted me to be, successful professionally because he was a common laborer and there was a point in, there's a, always a point in your life where you can't do that kind of work anymore. And nowadays that point is well before you get to retirement age. So he encouraged me to make something better of myself from a career standpoint by his negativity. You know, if I came home with a bad grade, he would tell me, well, the world always needs ditch diggers. Basically saying, well, if you fail school, you can just dig ditches like I did the rest of your life. And that negativity was kind of a driving force. You know, I didn't want to be like that. I didn't want to be like him. And he didn't accept me for who I was because he didn't accept himself. And it wasn't until a lot later in my life that I realized that. Um, but, you know, today I can look back and say, okay, it makes sense now. You know, he was the way he was because he wanted something better for me. He didn't go about it the right way. You know, I like to think I might be doing it better. But, you know, I think my experience has been accepting my kids and who they are and adapting that acceptance as you grow has been far more successful in my experience than it ever was with my dad. So we're going to take a quick break, come back, and we're going to get your closing thoughts and shout outs if you have any. Be okay. right back. Go for your closing thoughts. All righty. So to all the parents out there, I do want to say that it is important for you to accept your teen. It will help them later on in life. And being honest... I don't think it is right at all to compare them or to constantly belittle them. We go, teens are going through a lot in this time, and while your teen may be annoying now, they'll grow out of it later on due to their development issues. And I definitely think a lot of these tips will work and are definitely I, ones that most people should take under their wing. Um, like, um, you said before, we can't really entirely relate to this, but I'm pretty sure these tips will be able to help anyone who isn't, anyone who does have trouble with acceptance. And 
as a final note to all the parents out there, as long as as long as you can accept your teen and help them improve with good constructive criticism, that's all you really need to do as a parent, for the most part. Okay. Sage words as always. Thank you. Before we go, though, I do want to once again bug, I mean, uh, plug the show. Um, <laughs> you can find the audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. Video versions of all the network's podcasts can be listed as Insights into Things. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, and any place else you can get a podcast these days. I would also encourage our audience to write in, give us some feedback, tell us what we're doing right, tell us what we're doing wrong, give us some uh, show suggestions. We're running out of show topics, so any input would be appreciated. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We're on Twitter at insights underscore things. You can get high-res versions of all of our videos on our YouTube channel on youtube.com slash insights into things. We stream five days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. If you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, you do get a free monthly Twitch Prime subscription as well. We'd appreciate you subscribing to our channel. Audio versions of this podcast can be found on the web at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. On Instagram, you can find us at instagram.com slash insights into things where you can get links to all those and more on our website at www.insightsintothings.com and you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights into Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights into Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother Sam. Nicely done. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.